First, there was Pong. And there was this man's brilliant decision to allow the player character to move up or down on the screen. And thus, player choice in video games was born. Now fast forward a couple of years. Oh, what is this? Now we have a little bit more choice. Not only do we have the choice of omnidirectional movement, but we now have the choice to pick things up, shoot things, hell, even suicide's an option now. Couldn't do that in Pong now, could we? Now fast forward a little more. Whoa, 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 too far, bring it back. Oh, hold on. <laughs> this is something completely different. So now you're saying, not only do the choices I'm making in this virtual game affect how I play, but they can also change the story too? If I act like an evil bastard in the game, I'll be treated like one. It's just like real life, because, you know, just like in real life, all negative actions have proper consequences, right? Right? Anyways, game devs can now implement morality systems to shape the game around player choice. You might actually have a reason now to not relentlessly bully every NPC you come across. We got games like Fable, Undertale, shit, even Bioshock has a morality system in place. But uh, let's talk about a game with the most pronounced morality system that I could think of. Infamous. I mean shit, even says it right there on the back of the box. Blue good, red bad. Eh, you don't have to use much brain power here to figure out which choice is the moral one. But what are the consequences of choosing the bad path? Well, there are two branching pathways in the story. One where you're a dickhead and everybody treats you like one. For a second she sprung Ooh, to shit. life. Just long enough to say that she was ashamed of what become. <laughs> that God had given me these powers and I'd squandered them. And one where you aren't a dickhead and people don't treat you like one. For a second she sprung to life. Oh, again. Just long enough to say that she was proud of me for what I'd become. Proud that I was oh, how touching. people with my powers. I'll let you figure out for yourselves which one seems like the nicer option here. However, then you factor in gameplay. For one, it's much easier to be evil than good. For example, if you kill civilians even by accident, you gain negative karma. On top of that, you get different powers for being good or bad, and in my playthrough, I found the evil powers to be more useful and more fun. Suck my dick. Hmm, that's cool, I guess. So now the question is raised. Do you care enough to not be perceived as a bad guy by the characters in this game? Well, according to the completion percentages of the good and bad endings, this is the case for the majority of people who finish the game. I guess it really is ingrained in us as humans to not want to be seen as an asshole. Not me, though. Being evil is too much fun! And of course, it isn't just infamous. There are hundreds of games that have done this black and white, good versus evil pathing before. Mass Effect called it Paragon and Renegade. Here, you get the occasional different dialogue and some bonuses depending on how much of a dick you are. Fallout 3 called it Karma. Here, you get the occasional different dialogue and some bonuses depending on how much of a dick you are. Hell, even motherfucking Red Dead had a morality system. They called it Honor. Here, uh, what do you get here again? How many hours do I have on this game? Oh yeah, you get some different dialogue and some bonuses depending on how much of a dick you are. Please, make that noise stop. I don't care what you think. Let's see. I'm walking away. I now, the more observant individual might see a pattern here. And truth be told, there isn't anything inherently wrong with these karma systems. Hell, as a kid, even now I enjoy playing games like Infamous. But I still have a bone to pick with them. I remember being a stupid, dumb, idiot kid and seeing Infamous and being like, holy shit, this is amazing. This is a nuanced world where my actions have real consequences and will shape the world around me. But what it turned out to be was a glorified good versus bad skill progression tree in which I practically had to commit to one side right from the start in order to get the maximum benefits of whatever side I picked. As a system that's seemingly supposed to be about player choice, you only really make one choice at the very beginning of the game. Do I want to be good or bad? No matter what side we pick, we pretty much do the same actions anyways. 
Well, I mean, you get a different ending depending on what side you are on, and some could say this is good because it incentivizes a second playthrough. Uh, but in my experience, it's just been more like, okay, I finished the game once, now to rush to the other side so I can see the alternate ending. And it isn't just Infamous either. Pretty much all games with this system fall into the same traps to varying degrees. My voice must be heard! <coughs> oh my god! What did you do? That might have been a little extreme, Commander. Now compare that with a game like... <sighs> the Witcher 3. Daring today, aren't we? There is no meter. The effects of your choices aren't clearly defined. They may affect the story, characters, and gameplay in large or small ways, and you can't be 100% sure of the impact if they even will have an impact at all. Also, there aren't really objectively good and evil choices here. Give me the faith! In the oven! Throw him in the oven! <laughs> um, for the most part. And either way, the decisions in this game exist in more of a moral gray area. So you might actually have to use some brain power when deciding what choice you want to make. And it isn't just The Witcher that does this either. Games like Divinity 2, Dragon Age, like even I, Robot over here is doing this shit too. So are you saying you want all games to be more like these games? Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's not realistic. At the very least, I want games with these karma systems to react at least a little more dynamically to the choices players make, and maybe make me think a little bit more when I'm actually making these decisions. It seems like devs are already seemingly forgetting these old karma systems and are implementing more open-ended ones, but uh, I still don't feel like we've seen the last of the karma meter in video games. So anyways, what I'm really trying to say here is that I should go replay The Witcher 3.